And they opened her crown last year on the 4th of July, which is the exact same thing that happens in Egypt in Dendera on the 4th of July. When the Sirius rises, it, it gleams off a gem inside of, on the head of Isis's statue. When you start to realize who these people are and, and that, you know, here is Anubis, the one set to guard Osiris and Isis. And we are now being programmed with the, the children, uh, with the ideas of hosting God forms. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, you got to check out Disney's latest with Percy Jackson and with the Red Pyramid. And it's all about hosting God forms. And even the longest running sci-fi special, Stargate, also all about hosting God forms. This is where they're at in their understanding of the world and their god forms are evil and sinister. There's just no doubt about it. They are slasher killer heroes. So if we can look at what they're programming, like V for Vendetta, like Matrix and Neo, these are slasher killer heroes. Batman even became Azrael, the fallen angel, and became a slasher killer hero. Right. Uh, that's what they want from you. And so now if we can look at the picture and see, okay, protest is pointless, there's no reason. I mean, I was at the WTO IMO protest, protest IMF protest back in 2000 of April. Uh, and, of course, I watched thousands, 12,000 people get arrested at that thing, and no news, no press, no nothing about why the people were there, just that these angry, violent protesters were getting beat up by riot squads in the streets. That's where they want us. So now we've got to understand that point of the of the puzzle, understand that they're programming this type of mentality into the children so that they will be arrogant, violent children, and we have to turn against that. <laughs> we have to not rebel. We have to live. It's, it's, it's a tough struggle because we are brought against the end of the world. We feel like we have no time and that we, we have to do something. And what that does is put you straight into your reptilian brain. And that's where they want you. So the message is to start to find peace and to seek peace in each other and to get to know one another. And this is our time. This is the moment that you, humanity needs to unite in love instead of anger. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in fact, uh, if we start to reconnect with each other and the ecosystem, if we start to reconnect with a, a true economy based on what we, for example, my great-great-grandfather <clears throat> on my my mother's side was actually owned the caravan that went back and forth between the Silk Trail from Beirut, Lebanon, all the way to China. And they would go back and forth. And in those cultures, barter and, and uh, like eBay, you know, bidding on things was the nature of the culture. Uh, there's no such thing as, you know, false units that are actually debt units. We don't really have money. We have is... As Ronald McDonald says, and we're going to have him on the show at least twice a month now, we're going to be scheduling Ronald, uh, talking about legal issues, the fact you don't even own yourself, you don't own your education, you're licensed. Uh, we don't have a real economy. We have a false economy that makes the global elite super wealthy, trillionaires, and they even hide it. I mean, I hear people argue with me, no, the richest man is Bill Gates. What a pile of hogwash. The richest people are people that run foundations and have control of them, like the Rothschilds and Rockefellers, and their total wealth is literally two-thirds of the wealth of the planet is in their hands, either directly or indirectly through their foundations. And I'm pretty sure Harry Potter's J.K. Rowling has now surpassed Bill Gates. I'm sure. Now, the fact is, these people are what I call the, uh, for the media consumption, billionaires. But the billionaires are basically, as I say, it's one thing to have a, a lot of money in the bank account. It's still another thing to own the printing press to make the money, and it's the third thing to own the man that owns the printing press. And that owner is the Vatican and the global elite called the Council of the, of the Druids. The Druidic Council, the Council of the Dark Twelve of the Thirteenth being literally the Pindar, they're the one that runs Earth, Inc. as a corporation, literally a non-living thing for Lucifer himself. And the, one of the greatest challenges People don't believe that they're in a battle with transdimensional beings that are super intelligent, super malevolent, and have crushed Earth uh, under its boot for untold thousands of years. Well, let's take that one step there. Now, people have spent millions of dollars on CERN, on the Large Hadron Collider. People have spent millions of dollars launching the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer up to the ISIS, up to the International Space Station, to look for what? Dark matter. And what are they announcing now? Dark planets? 
perhaps dark beings. And if you don't believe in interdimensional travel and you don't believe in interdimensional beings, then why are we spending billions of dollars punching holes into the other dimension with the Large Hadron Collider's Atlas and Alice? Right. So let's just say that our science is proving what we're saying here. That yeah. It is beyond what most people consider reality, even though the reality is right in front of us, or we wouldn't be paying this money into these things. The search for dark matter by the RHIC, the, the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider here in America, whose uh, names are Phoenix and Star. I mean, these are, you know, come on, catch on to the, the system here. Yeah, exactly. These are looking for the dark beings, the dark matter, the, the people on the other side. So if we don't believe in any of that, then why are we paying for all of this? Well, in fact, it's the, the real issue, and if you actually know about some of the advanced things like uh, uh, Ron L. Hubbard and others, is that the parallel beings of the Nephilim actually broke through a dimensional window from a parallel dimension and are literally trying to take over this timeline. Uh, if you understand that these global elite believe that the return of their, quote, their gods is going to occur on or after 2012, it's not by chance that these ceremonies are happening in our day. Yes, and then also the programming, as I'm saying, with Percy Jackson, with Harry Potter, with the Red Pyramid, with SG-1, all of that about hosting the gods hosting these interdimensional entities into your soul. They're teaching this to children. And if you watch, you, know, you just watch and, and see what I'm saying. Uh, you'll you'll start to pick it up and understand that they're programming our children into this ritual, you know, and it's it's a scary thing. It's a death ritual. It's a ritual not just of the death of the population or the ecosystem. It's the death of the soul. See, as I said, there's two things that people need to get grasp. It's like understanding zero one in mathematics. If you don't know the nature of what you are as a being, and if you don't know the nature of your universe, both wonderful and ugly, you have no way of surviving the nature of our world and the future of our civilization hangs in the balance. And that's the real problem here. So that the world is literally run by occultists. The occultists don't read the newspaper, they make the newspaper. Yeah. Can you tell us how they do that? Well, you, you got me thinking about 1984 and, and the whole idea when Winston and O'Brien are battling at the end. Winston's already imprisoned, as we are, in this 1984 scheme. But he has not lost because he's still Winston. But when Big Brother finally convinces him that he has to give over everything, and it's through torture that they, they convince him finally to give up his soul, to give up his true spirit, that's the moment Winston loses. Not when he was imprisoned, not when he was uh, attacked, or even when he was being surveilled. It was the moment he gave up his true will and his whole, his soul over to Big Brother. Yeah, in other words, he gave over his identity and wished to only reflect their image of what they wanted him to be. Exactly. The living undead, in other words, to turn into a zombie. That's exactly right. Yeah, amazing. Remarkable discussion, Freeman. We need to get you back on soon. As I say, you pulled out a powerful one today. Uh, Freeman, your website is? FreemanTV.com FreemanTV.com Freeman, you are remarkable again. People need to understand this. If they don't understand the dark side, they will be victims. And they have delved deep into the the caves and the deep places of the earth like Casa Doom, and they've unleashed from the bottomless pit hell. And hell is quickly gathering on earth. If you don't repent, you'll be facing it soon. <laughs>